Hey guys, so I've actually had a couple people contact me um, because they have gotten orders to come to England and they found my videos, which is just crazy to me because I kind of just made them like for my family and just thought about posting them on YouTube. I thought it would be helpful to kind of give you guys a list of things when you first arrive because moving here was probably one of the hardest things I've ever done. So I wanted to give you a list of 10 things to expect or do when you guys first arrive here. So um, there's actually a shuttle that will pick you up from the airport and take you to the base. Um, I, we personally didn't take the shuttle because we brought our dog with us and we didn't think that we would be able to take the shuttle with the dog but there is another shuttle that you can pay a little more for and they will take your dog for you. Uh, we didn't know this so we ended up renting a car from the airport uh, from Enterprise and that was probably the worst decision we've ever made. Number one, you're super jet lagged so staying awake for that two hour drive from London to here was, I couldn't do it. I kept passing out and my poor husband had to drive the whole way and thank goodness for him that he didn't fall asleep because the jet lag is real. And number two, they charged us now with the exchange rate ended up being about $500 and we only had the rental car for two days. It was an obscene amount of money. So find the shuttle um, and also if you have a dog, there's a shuttle now that I'm learning for that. And the shuttle will take you straight to TLF. Side note, if you have orders and you know the exact date you're gonna be arriving here, I would call TLF immediately, especially if you're bringing a dog with you because we, we weren't able to get a pet room. So definitely try to book your TLF as soon as you possibly can, depending on what base you're going to. I have my notes down here, so. Anyways, um, so once you arrive, you can actually rent a car here um, in, in town, in Mildenhall. A friend of mine who just got here last week, she didn't know that you could rent a car. Her sponsor didn't tell them. So um, here you guys go. You can rent a car without having your driver's license here yet. Uh, there's like a couple places that I know of. One is called Reliable Car Rentals and the other one is called Low Cost Car Rentals. We went through Low Cost Car Rentals and I think for the SUV style, which was like a Honda CRV, it was 70 pounds a week and for our, we also rented a Lexus that was 45 pounds a week. 45 pounds is probably about $60 a week, which is not bad at all. And you can rent those until your car comes over if you're shipping it or until you purchase the car. And then, let's see. So after you've kind of set all that up, um, your husband obviously will have to start in processing and he'll be going to all those briefings. And there's really not much that you can do. I, we kind of just hung around the hotel room or walked around base. But um, once he is able to go get things done, he'll need to set up uh, a P.O. box before he does anything else. So before you get a bank account, before you get phones, anything, you have to have your P.O. box. And I'm pretty sure he'll do that during his um, briefings and in-processing. I don't think you need to be there with him for that. I wasn't there with my husband for that. So once he got the P.O. box, we then went to the bank on base. We used community bank on base. You can also use off base, like I think it's called Barclays or Lloyd's. Now, I'm really like, it's a controversial subject for everybody here and it's all based on preference. But then again, you're gonna run into difficulties no matter what bank you get. But I would definitely suggest if you don't have USAA to get USAA before you come over here. We use them for everything. And I can do like a whole finance video later. I'm still trying to figure it out. But basically we use USAA for almost everything. Our insurance, our paychecks go in there and then we have community bank for our pounds account. Um, and you have to also have a dollar checking account with them. So we chose Community Bank. It was right across the street from the TLF on Lake and Heath, so it was quick, easy. We just went in and signed up. But it's it's a it's a lengthy process. Not necessarily the process of setting it up, but just the process of learning the bank accounts and the financial here. It's pretty difficult. Um, we've been here about four months, and every month on the first one, it's time to go pay rent. Um, cursing out the world because it's super difficult and we can't seem to situate ourselves but that takes that takes a lot of time so prepare that it's not easy and it's not fun um 
Also, if you have USAA when you first arrive, please, please, please call them and give them your new PO Box number and tell them that you're overseas because for some reason, every time I use my, I wouldn't even say every time, that's the thing, is it, is it, it varies. I'll use my card off base and I'll be fine. And then one day I'll use my card at the ATM on base and it will block my card because it can't realize that I'm in a different country, even though I'm using my card on base at the ATM. So randomly, it just likes to block our cards, even though we've registered our cards with our PO box on base. So I would call and make sure that they know you're off, you're you're in a different country. This is your address now, and it hopefully will help you not to get blocked on your USAA card. Anyway, so once you have a PO box and once you have a bank account, then you can go get uh, phones. So there's a couple options. We went with three. Everyone told us that that was the best option. And you can also go with Vodafone. I think you can get them through the VX on base, but I'm not 100% sure about that. We went through three and we didn't bring our phones with us from the States because we had been leasing them. So we got phones through three. So of course our bill is a lot more because we're also purchasing our phones with them as well. But if you bring your phones over, make sure they're unlocked. Um, they need to be unlocked and then you can use them through three and you can just get the SIM and pay for the SIM each month. So it's like a prepaid um, phone service. And I would suggest that. Like if you have phones and you don't really want to get a new phone, just do that. It's, it's a ton cheaper. Don't let them talk you into unlimited, or as they call it here, all you can eat, internet. Because the internet here, prepare yourselves. The internet here is nothing like it is in the States. It is so slow, even with 4G. Unless you're in a bigger city, um, you know, London or Bury St. Edmunds, it will work and you'll get 4G. But in Lake and Heath and Milton Hall, you're pretty limited to 3G. Um, so most places you go, almost every restaurant and grocery store here has its own Wi-Fi because the internet doesn't work. So don't let them talk you into the all you can eat like they talked us into because you won't use it. You just won't. Now since arguing with them, we've got it down to four gigs of data a month. And that's just enough to use like our maps and things like that. And then anywhere else we go, we make sure to turn our mobile data off and use the Wi-Fi only. Anyway, so that's the phones. The, that's what I would suggest when you're doing your phones. The next thing is that at some point you will have to take your driver's test. If you have kids, your husband will probably take the test before you because trying to find a babysitter here when you get here is pretty hard. I couldn't. Um, so I, my husband went first and took the driving test and then the week after he stayed with the kids and I went and took the driving test. If um, you go to the Airman Family Readiness Center, they give you, I forget how many hours of free childcare um, for PCSing in, but if you have an infant, prepare that you're not going to get a place for them because I have a four-year-old and I had a two-month-old at the time and I could get my four-year-old in but I couldn't get my two-month-old in anywhere. So that is an option to use the FCC provider daycare um, if you do want to try to take the test at the same time as your husband. But the test wasn't too bad. It was from about 8 to 12 and you took a break halfway through and went to the chapel and met with like vendors. So the college here and they also gave you information on schools for your children and things like that. And I can go into a video also about schools. My daughter, she's in an off-base school and I love it, but um, we we were open to either option. So I could go into those as well if you guys would like a video for that, comment and let me know. So anyways, that's the driving test. And then once, you get, once you're done with the driving test, you can take that and your ID card to pass in registration because they have to register your ID card to live here. You can get on base obviously, but they'll ask you, you know, are you new here? Please go get your card registered and you get a chance. We waited until we passed our driver's test so we don't have to go in there twice because we all know sitting there forever, it's just not fun. So after that, I went and registered my card and I picked up my license. And what happens is when you first pick up your license, um, if you're still renting a car, they won't put a car on your license because obviously you don't have a car yet. But if you do have a car with you, which I did at the time, I had just bought my little Chevy. Um, I went in and they put, you you take in like your car's information. I forget the exact paperwork, but they'll explain it to you in the driver's test. So you take that information in and they'll put, like they put my husband's car on there and my car on there, on the back of my license. And what it is, is every time you go and get gas, you have to take that, your license up there with you with your military ID and your USAA card or whatever card you're paying with and you have to show them your license because you are only allowed to fill up the cars that are on the back of your license. 
so you can't just you know borrow your friend's car and go fill it up if it's their car they're the only ones allowed to fill it up to get your gas on base now if you're still renting a car and you need to get gas from your rental car what you do is you bring your license or if you don't have your license yet your military ID and you tell them you just got here you tell them it's a rental car and that you don't have your license yet but if you do have your license you bring your license your military ID and then bring the paperwork for the rental car and let them know that you're renting um, and they'll let you get gas but if you own a car your cars will be on the back of the license and that's those are the only vehicles you're allowed to fill up so um, just two more things that I thought to mention in this video I didn't really know where they would fit in um, once you find a house and you move in you uh, you can call FMO and they will provide you with loaner furniture so you can get like a mattress up on, up on a little bed frame you can get a couch uh, a table with chairs uh, and things like that that you need also if you're renting a house and it doesn't have closets you can get wardrobes from FMO and you'll be able to keep them the duration of your stay here just like with um, a lot of houses here you have to get your appliances from FMO so your washer and dryer you'll get from FMO we got our refrigerator from FMO and if you have a space for a dishwasher and the dishwasher is not already provided in the house you would get that from FMO as well so they'll deliver all that as well as transformers they'll give you transformers so they'll give you one transformer per person in your household so we have four transformers we did get our washer and dryer from FMO and our refrigerator we didn't get our stove or our dishwasher because we don't have space for a dishwasher and our stove came already installed in the house so we didn't need to um, get those from FMO but you can call and set that up as soon as you move into your house there's a loaner locker I've heard that supplies are limited they only have a certain amount of things so if you're coming at the peak of PCS season you might be out of luck but we were able to rent all our kitchen items from the loaner locker at the family readiness center so we got like pots pans cutting boards knives forks silverware cups um, mixing bowls um, scissors can openers a wine opener <laughs> all of that uh, it comes in this big trunk and you can rent it from them I think it's for 30 days at a time um, that was really really helpful because we didn't do an unaccompanied bag and I might as well throw that in here too because I don't really know what other video I would add it to if you're planning on doing an unaccompanied bag I've heard from a lot of people who come here that their unaccompanied bag ends up arriving at the same time or after their um, household goods arrives so we did not do an unaccompanied bag we just packed everything that we could fit into our suitcases and everything we thought we would need into our suitcases another option is you personally can go and send a box on your own if your husband is able from his sponsor to get his PO box before he arrives we didn't do that but I know some sponsors can go and set up the PO box for you before you arrive so you can mail a box to yourself we didn't do that either we just, like I said, packed whatever we could in our bags, and then we were planning on either buying new things, new pots and pans, or um, going to the Airman's Attic or the thrift store um, to buy things. The Mildenhall thrift store is really nice. It has, I think it's really nice. It has a lot of nice stuff for pretty reasonably priced. I haven't gone to the Lake and Heath Airman's Attic or thrift store yet, so I'm not too sure what they have. Anyways, that's all I really have for this video. I'm going to try try to make videos every Monday now my friend is convincing me to do it so maybe for my next video she'll sit in with me because I I do still get really nervous in front of the camera uh, but if you have any other questions comment them down below and in my next video I'll try to address them there's a couple videos I have in mind that I want to make such as if you're planning on bringing a pet things that you need to do because that is a very lengthy and very specific process and can be very stressful very quickly so if I can help with that I'd love to um, and then you know just things to expect or that I didn't expect moving here I'd like to make a video about that but if you have any other ideas comment down below and let me know I'd love to get my friend on here with me so she can give her sides of the story she just moved here so you can get two different experiences on moving here but uh, anyways I hope you enjoyed don't forget to subscribe and comment down below have a good day bye